Hello, everybody. Um, <laughs> I'm, making a sheet pan. I'm going to talk about making a sheet pan dinner. And um, first, mm -hmm. you, you set up your stove and turn it on to 400. Get your oven ready. Here's my sheet pan, which is plenty of space for everything that I'm going to be cooking. It's at least two people. If you're making it for three people, one of whom eats a lot, I do it in two pans, but what I'm doing. Uh, actually, when I'm just cooking for myself, something that's half this is just fine too. So, you know, that will fit into, uh, into a toaster oven. Okay, so you come home and you are tired out and you don't want to do anything. And so what you start doing, you say, okay, I need to make my dinner. Mm -hmm. And I start out with putting just a little bit of olive oil onto the sheet pan, just a bit. You, it, more stuff can be on there, but you know, you just sort of scooch it around. And you're going to start with the vegetables that take a longer time. So I'm doing sweet potatoes, baby potatoes. And I know this is weird, but I walked, I was at Occidental in their garden yesterday and they were harvesting Jerusalem artichokes. Oh. Yeah. oh. All you need is a little part, part to start yum. those. So I'm just going to throw those in. And I would do onions with <laughs> So you start by, I'm going to peel my sweet potato. It's a huge one, and I've only got half of it. But now what I do is I have a bowl, like a separate bowl that will go into the dishwasher. And I'm just going to throw everything into there to start out with because it will mean that it'll be easy to get olive oil all over it. So you're just, okay, I've got it. Pretty much peeled. I'm going to cut it into. Okay, so I'm going to cut these little potatoes into chunks. Toss them in that bowl. I'm not even peeling them. Why? Why bother? I washed them. I did wash them, just like I I did. I washed my hands. So you, you were using Idaho's, would you peel them? I, I, I don't. Okay. I, just, I just wash them. If I were using, the only thing that I would be concerned about would be if it was very dirty. But I like them with the, the peel on. Yeah, so do I. It would be delicious, so why not? I the ones that have slashes in them which get dirt in the slashes and you can't get out, so. Right, and that would be, that would, I would do that. Those are seconds anyway. Right, it all depends. And potatoes go in. Into the bowl. Now, you can use Potatoes, beets, turnips. I've used turnips. I'm not a fan of turnips, but that'll work. I'm going to take these cute little Jerusalem artichokes in there. And I've got half an onion. That... I'm just going to do big chunks. 
that was left over from last night. Uh, let me do the wedges. And in with all of this goes, oh, how about half of a garlic? Here's a clove of garlic. I'm going to cut the end off. And I've got about six baby potatoes, an onion, and a butternut squash. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't even bother peeling the garlic. Um, it, it's fine. So it all goes in. Okay. Now this, this is the first step. So all I'm doing with this is pouring some olive oil on it. And coating it in olive oil, I'm going to put mm, herbs de Provence. Why not? And oh, Montreal chicken seasoning. It could be Montreal, it could be just salt and pepper. It doesn't matter. And then Now, if you were a stick, if you wanted to have all of this separate, you know, if you wanted to have all the Jerusalem artichokes over there, all of the, you know, you could. I just don't care. But you could do it individually in the bowl and then put it in. And this goes in right now. So now we have an oily seasoned bowl, and here's my chicken. I've got a breast of chicken, bone in, so it's going to take a little longer to cook. Here are, here are two thighs, you know, just is. Um, it could be plain chicken breasts. It could be tenders, chicken tenders, but chicken tenders take less time to cook. Okay, so what do you do with this? They need to have, now I, I washed those before and dried them off. And what they need to do is get something on them that, that uh, breadcrumbs will stick to. So what I'm doing today is I have cilantro salad dressing. I know Carrie hates cilantro, so <laughs> it's all right. I won't do it if you were But ever I've got ready. ranch dressing. But ranch would be good. Anything that's sticky, you know, uh, mustard, uh, uh, you could do balsamic vinegar dressing. You could do ranch. Blue cheese is excellent. Uh, sour cream. Uh, plain yogurt. Mm. It's, uh, all, of, all that I'm looking at is something that the breadcrumbs will stick to. So I'm just going to do that. Notice it's in the same bowl. And Italian breadcrumbs. Now, you could do panko. You could just actually do nothing and put this in. It would be fine. Cause, but I would put breadcrumbs on a boneless chicken breast. It needs something to to use it. up. Yeah, it just needs that. So I'm going to 
And since I'm such a stickler for doing everything perfectly, I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna put it in. That's uh, De two and a half pounds of breadcrumbs. Whatever. And then <laughs> some um, Parmesan cheese, why not? <laughs> Okay, so that is going to go on to, notice I'm, I'm not doing this like you've got to prep it ahead of time. You're, you're making it as you go, as you go. It's totally fine. So I'm just gonna take out right and all that I'm going to do is put this on the edge on the one side of it and stick it back in the oven Okay, so we've started. I mean, it's, and you know something? It would be just mighty fine just that way. It would be, you've got dinner. The only thing is you probably want to have something green. So I have half of a zucchini. I know that wasn't part of my recipe, but what the hell? I had it. And that goes into the bowl, the same bowl. You have not cleaned anything. Um, and I had half of a uh, red pepper because it's pretty. Again, all you're doing is just chopping it into pieces you can get all, you can do it into strips like this. That looks pretty. Or not. Just throw that in. How about mushrooms, Kate? Oh, yeah. And speaking of mushrooms, because I can and because I like them, mushrooms and they they're they're mighty fine in this so there you go now what are you doing you're just scooching it around adding a little bit more olive oil a little bit more herbs some pepper, and salt, seasoned salt. You really don't have to do all of this stuff that I'm doing. You really don't have to. Yeah, I just, I just like it. Um, but I've noticed that, um, okay, I was at Nadine's because today is Nadine's birthday. Uh, I was at Nadine's yesterday and she had a stack of those, those recipes that you, they, you pay for and they come and you, you cook them. What is it? Kitchen Fresh or something like that. Mm -hmm. They rely on this this technique all of the time in those. Only they they do, they will do they'll do mashed potatoes and then they'll do veggies and and something you know a protein. It's just it's what they do. And the thing that I find interesting is you can do it yourself so much cheaper. It's so much cheaper to do it. Like oh, I'm cleaning out the fridge. No. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. 
So, I have green beans and a few asparagus to put on mine. Exactly. Um, I, I do oven frying, oven cooking, roasting for Brussels sprouts. I forgot to put oh, that. Oh, I do oven. too. I love Brussels sprouts that way. And you put a little bit of Parmesan cheese on them? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. And then just stand next to the oven and eat them. <laughs> <laughs> so I would probably wait a little while to put this in, but since I like all charred vegetables, I've got them on the side here. And... It goes back in the oven. And now you can, for the next 15 minutes, you can go out in your garden. You can stare sullenly at the sink. You can watch your wine. You can watch Rachel and Rachel's on. I mean, <laughs> You've done. Done, basically and if you don't get to the green vegetable part which is broccolini you don't even you know it doesn't matter um it's at, you would put that and leave that in there for at least 15 or 20 more minutes before you would add anything green now except for the uh, broccoli or cauliflower. I'd probably put the broccoli in in five minutes, Carrie. Okay. You know, um, baby girl is having broccoli tonight. But, so, you're done. You're basically wow. done. Nice. You go around and you clean your kitchen and you put things away and there are no dead bodies around <laughs> and it's it's just mighty fine and then um and then you'll probably have leftovers if you did it as as much stuff in there as i did you probably have leftovers so what do you do with leftovers um there's some lovely things that you can do. Trader Joe's has curry sauces. So you would make yourself, tomorrow, you would make yourself some rice, put the vegetables, use the curry, curry sauce, or, or they have red madras sauce, and you now have vegetable curry for tomorrow. Or you could throw it into a frittata. We've done frittatas. Um, you could, you could uh, scramble some eggs and put them in scrambled eggs. Um, the thing is, you've got on hand a bunch of really good veggies that are- Make them into tacos. Mm -hmm. Make them into yeah. tacos. I have thought of that, but that is, yeah. Put them in tacos. Yeah. Fajitas. Be good. Yeah. Put them over pasta. Put it into pasta. Make a cream sauce with sour cream and and cheese and put it onto pasta. Or if you had some red sauce left over, like Bertoli's or ragu or something, and you had a little bit of that, put it with the veggies and put it over pasta. Um that you, what you've done is you've set yourself up. You've got a lot of, a lot of options and you don't have to cook anymore. Mm -hmm. That's the whole idea. I love it. Yeah. And, and give yourself permission to do, you know, what would be fun with this? Today, Liz, for lunch, did her own, her own thing. She's got a new job, so she's got to have lunch. She did, she did a veggie tray, and 
she had, um, she put on the salmon. I told her, now be careful with the salmon because salmon takes less time. And she said, what if I put pesto on top of that? And I thought, oh, yeah, there well, you go. That's good. Um, also, a lemon with, a le you can roast a lemon when you cut it into wedges and stick it on the tray with the salmon. That's good. Or cut it into thin slices and place it artfully on top of the salmon. It works good too. Um, last night, I'll show you a second. Oh, someone's been eating this. I think it's <laughs> I had three guesses who. <laughs> yes. I had some leftover pilaf, mushroom pilaf, and then veggies from last night. There were a lot more veggies. I think she <laughs> likes this because I think she ate it as a midnight snack. But anyway, I was making it just to, because I like to make stuff in case I screw up. <laughs> and um, I made it last night that but I had the peel off from two nights ago. Mm -hmm. So um, you can, there, there's lots of stuff you can do with it and um, doctor it up with. And uh, I've made sausages in the oven, though I tend to like to make sausage stew more than, than putting it in the oven like this. Mm -hmm. um, fish, salmon. Salmon doesn't take that long. Salmon takes about 10 or 15 minutes. So if you're doing salmon, either remove it early or put it on later. One or the other. If we're doing salmon and say asparagus and potatoes, I would put the potatoes in when the potatoes are about half done because it takes them um, maybe 40 minutes to do potatoes the way I like them. They'll be soft and cooked before then, but I like them crispy. Um, so I will, you can put them on, on about the same time, about 15 minutes or 20 minutes after the potatoes are in there you can then scooch them to the side and put on the, the salmon and the asparagus. So it, it has really made a difference for me. I took your name in vain, Liz. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I told them about Hi, Liz. Hi. 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 Oh, good. And you, was easy. you suggested it. You decided that you wanted that, that pesto on it. I did. Because it sounded nice. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah. It's like um, you can do whatever you need. Bye, Bonnie. See you next week. Bye, Bonnie. Um, you can do whatever, you know, it's like, whatever, you, you come up with something, it's not going to be bad, it's going to be great, and meanwhile, you have plenty of time to drink your wine. So what if you're doing like, sometimes I like to do pork. Could I do a pork using a sheet pan dinner? You mean like a tenderloin? I would do a tenderloin. Okay. Because I usually like buy it Joe's just sort of thinly so sliced. Oh, now thinly sliced pork chops. Again, you look at how long they take. Yeah. If they ordinarily take, now, if they ordinarily take like 20 minutes, then you know you can, you can throw them on mm -hmm. 20 minutes. Um, I would do a 
tenderloin, um, probably you could you could put barbecue sauce on it, or you know you could do any kind of thing. You don't need to do breadcrumbs, right? And um, and I have done a pork roast with apples. Mm. Oh. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, I do pork roast in a pan and I throw potatoes, onions around it and apples. That's just a sheet pan, it seems to me. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so it, but if you've got something that isn't a roast, it isn't, and certainly, Mariana, it wouldn't matter if with just plain vegetables. Mm -hmm. I know that you're, you're, you're a vegetarian household. What I was going to say, though, about um, pork tenderloin is that the best, two of the best cooks I know are Kiki and Christy Furla. And I remember watching them make a tenderloin one time because their tenderloin is so much better than any I've ever had in a restaurant. And I couldn't figure out what it was that they were doing. Um, and I thought like, oh, it's got to be like yogurt and lemon, like then you know, they, before they roll it with the breadcrumbs, there's got to be something like dill because it's, it's tastes like a lemony, delicious thing. And I couldn't figure out what it was. And um, she started laughing and I said, what? And she goes, oh, I just put mayonnaise all over it. And then, you know, like <laughs> roll it and they say squirt some lemon juice and roll it in the breadcrumbs and you know you put whatever kind of fresh spices you want on top and then it stick it in the sheet on the sheet pan and stick it in the oven and then it's just the time Perfect. and everybody thinks i'm a fucking genius <laughs> very thick Great. accent too um darling you know like just like something out of a movie um but she was a she's a fabulous cook and and she's somebody who can you know it's like kate can <laughs> the chicken on the phone with a glass of wine and like you know, I don't know, Betty Draper style or something. But I never thought of using mayonnaise, but mayonnaise makes things stick to it. Yeah, yep. exactly. But it also forms like a seal around the outside of the tenderloin. That's right. Then it's really, really nice. And then mm -hmm. the other thing that she taught me was if you're making souvlaki or any kind of chicken skewer, marinate the meat in, um, you know, vermouth overnight. And put all this spice and the olive oil and the whatever you want marinating the meat for the um, chicken, and then you grill it that way. And it is so much more tender. I don't know something about the vermouth acts as a natural meat tenderizer, and so it tastes much better. It's the best. She makes the best souvlaki. So awesome! Great, awesome. Not that I eat meat anymore, but yeah. <laughs> I learned about using mayonnaise with a recipe for my microwave. Chicken, mm -hmm. naked chicken pieces, you know? Yeah. Slap them with mayonnaise with a little bit of Dijon in them, stick them in the microwave, and they don't come out either, they don't come out raw and they don't come out overdone. They're mm -hmm. really nice and juicy. Uh, I love this group. They, <laughs> there are such good cooks there. <laughs> I use mayonnaise a lot in the South as a marinade and for everything else. Yeah. Huh. Hair tonic, right? <laughs> Hair tonic, yeah. <laughs> but it keeps the juices in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it, it, does. it really does. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's been in about 20 minutes. I'm going to, um, I've still got my, my bowl there that is, um that is has a you know the leftovers from what's happening and so i'm just going to cut off the ends of the broccolini toss them in again it's whatever you want and then i'm going to take it out and throw it on top and uh, it's been about 15, 20 minutes since I put it in. This will go in for about 10 or 15 minutes. It'll end up being 40 minutes. You, you know, when the chicken is done, 
or when everything is sufficiently charred. Mm -hmm. Now, I happen to have a real soft spot for charred anything. I love my vegetables charred. Me too. <laughs> Some people don't like that, and that's fine. You know, I mean, one of the nice things about cooking for yourself is you can do it the way you want it. And nobody can tell you otherwise. And if your husband doesn't like them charred, just take them out early and then put yours back in. <laughs> so at any rate, there you go. That's that's chic yeah. dinner and you can do it any way you want. Um, oh, <clears throat> else that is good that I've done is I've made carrots and put a mu um, mustard um, honey mm. topping on them. That's good too. So, oh, I'm going to put carrots in it. Thank you. Yeah. Put I have some leftover carrots. Leftover stuff, those baby carrots, all of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, I made a list. <laughs> it's the bottom drawer of the refrigerator is going in the oven tonight. <laughs> well, that's, uh, you know, you'll notice that a lot of my recipes are, it doesn't matter. So doesn't matter. anything in there, including, including cleaning out the refrigerator. Um, hey, have you ever put cabbage in a sheet pan? Yes, I have. I, I particularly like cabbage that's sort of burnt on the edges. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so I've done that, too. Um, anything that you kind of like that, that crispy, you, you just cook it until you, it's done the way you like it. So, and I know Carrie is doing two sheet pans. If you do two sheet pans, then you have, you can really count on your leftovers. And so, which is one of the reasons why I told you all, there's a number of things you can do with your leftovers, including just warming them up and eating them. You know, Kate, I've been using your pizza dough recipe for calzones, and that's kind of been my go-to throw everything in a calzone lately. First, we started with frittatas, and then we got a little burnt out, so now everything goes in the calzone dough, and it's so good. I yeah. love it. I love it. I never would have thought of doing I that. I mean, veggies oh, and so all in a calzone. Yeah. Oh, and I've been I've been exploring puff pastry. So okay. just what can you throw in a puff pastry? That's, that could be <laughs> our really next fun. one, right? You know that Jamie Oliver does something. When I just thought of this, I hadn't thought of this before. He puts the veggies down, cooks them until they're soft, puts a sheet uh, of of puff pastry over the top of them. Oh. Then cooks that until it's crispy. And then when he turns it out, he turns it upside down. Upside, and then, oh. Wow. Well, that would be <laughs> yummy. And I've seen him do that and I thought, oh, that sounds like something I could do with the veggies. <laughs> mm -hmm. and I didn't even think of that until you said that, Carrie. Mm -hmm. That I mean, when when you start thinking about what do I want to eat, and you think about okay, I want something crisp, and I want something soft, and I want maybe cheese, maybe a sauce, maybe not a sauce. Yeah, you just kind of. Oh, what do I have in the fridge? Let's yeah. go with you know. Mm -hmm. It it works out. Uh, well, you know, now that we got paid, I have stuff in my fridge. <laughs> <laughs> I always did that. Uh, it was the first of the month two days ago, and I went. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and um, and Tyler for my my brother for my birthday. 
um, gave me his old fridge. I was going to buy it from him. He's like, no, happy birthday. And, um, and so I have a second fridge now in the garage. That I'm so excited about because my fridge is so tiny. It's itty bitty and you can't get a bigger fridge in my, in my kitchen. So now I have like good size Great. fridge to put stuff in. Great. It, it's a slippery slope, Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that it is. <laughs> a freezer and a refrigerator in the garage. Mm -hmm. You know that. And I, it, I use it all of the time. I love it. I love it. But now I can shop at Costco. I never could before. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, does anybody have any requests for next week? No? I'm open. Should it be Carrie's birthday choice? Ooh. Well, oh, we have birthday Carrie's girl. <laughs> Mariana and Carrie. Well, birthday yeah. girl. True. Right. I mean, I never mind telling people what to do. So if you are going to let me pick, that's fine. But it's her birthday first. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it, Mariana. Because you know what I what I would pick, we already did. <laughs> okay. Um, Enchiladas. Enchiladas. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, that's what I need to bring tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I, I would like to- I just made a bunch today. You know what I would like to learn how to do would be, I'd like to learn how to make, um, and this probably sounds terrible because I am vegetarian, but I'd like to learn how to make um, like fake, or the Zanku chicken, you know, like the, like the garlic butter sauce and the chicken, and then maybe like falafel too. I don't know. Because that's like such an Armenian food here. Like the, uh, there's the pickled side and then like the roasted vegetables on skewers and the cherry rice. There's all this stuff that goes with like a traditional kebab. Mediterranean plate, you know? Well, see, fun. I've never made. That's why I like to, what I like to do is the opposite with Kate, which is to ask her to figure something out. Like, um, you know, the, the, um, le the kebab that's like ground meat. Oh, Lula, yeah. right? Lula kebab, yes. Yeah. Lula, Lula kebab. And I can use Beyond Burger for burger and make it the same way and cook it up. <laughs> okay, well, I guess I'm just going to try and you know, figure out something for you guys. <laughs> uh, Is she whatever you do, it's this. gonna be great. I, know. So, uh, I mean, you know, I I'm willing. If, if we did, if we did lule kebab and hummus, ooh, there you go. That would be wonderful. Uh, I can do that. I've made hummus. Yeah, <laughs> I make hummus all the time. Yeah, hummus I just hummus. I can't I can't stand to. And, and Stuart loves it too. And I said, look at the price they charge for a little bit of hummus. It takes you two minutes in your little Cuisinart. Bam, it's done. <laughs> now, now, do you put in um, uh, tahini? Sure. Yeah. 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 I do use you, a can do, of garbanzo do beans. The, do you drained. use the dry garbanzo or canned? Canned. Pick piece, just the can. And then, okay. and then make sure that you drain them. Save the drains in case you need the liquid to make it okay. you know, a little bit better. And then tahini, uh, garlic, salt and pepper. Uh, par I put parsley in. <laughs> like parsley. Lemon. That's it. It's, it's a, a beginning to end, five minutes. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, boom. <laughs> you can do that next week, and then I'll make the... I'm going to really look for Lula kebab and see what I can do and whether I can make it and I'll I'll do it with the what is it impossible burger oh yeah that would be awesome yeah it might be a big downer for everyone else but for me it's super exciting <laughs> well, it would be the same yeah it it's true same. we'll you do it with beef exactly the same <laughs> So yeah, oh. it does cook amazingly, just exactly like ground beef. The only thing different is it doesn't, uh, yeah, have, they don't have fat in the pan afterwards. Mm -hmm. Do you find, cause I've cooked Impossible Burger a couple of times and I find that it ends up really salty. Like it takes on the flavor really strong of whatever it is that I'm mixing with it. Huh. I know I haven't noticed that. I've but done it I believe... twice and it's been super salty. Huh. But I did you mix it that. with Carrie? Huh? 
What did you mix it with? So like um, one time I did taco seasonings and mm -hmm. another I made spaghetti with it. Mm -hmm. And it was just very salty both times. And I was like, okay, so is this the bur And it was impossible burger. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I thought- Tomatoes I are very yeah. salty. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it makes sense that if that's how that one particular, I mean, because they're all a little different. Um, mm -hmm. Beyond Burger is a little different. Mm -hmm. I definitely want to use. But I don't know. Uh, like maybe you just have to cut the salt. I don't know. Yeah. I like the one that they sell at Trader Joe's, the uh, meatless. Ooh, that looks good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ooh. It's Ooh. really good. It's yum. Look, I know that the chicken is almost done. I'm gonna leave it in there for another five minutes or so. Yeah. And I'm just gonna put this on top and see. You know, but that's pretty much the way it looks. That was so good. Certainly, these are certainly soft right now, but I want them a little chilly. So you leave it on 400 the whole time, right? Yeah, I do. I don't want to, if I'm, if I'm doing it, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, fiddle with the timing. With the, the, like, okay, is it, but it could be 425 if you yeah. wanted it, 425. It could be 400. If you do it at 375, which I've done, you just have to leave it in there a little longer. That's okay. Fine. So, and I just checked the temperature of my meat and it's about 135. So it needs a little bit more time. It needs longer. Yeah. I do it's love, fun. not that much longer. It's, it's so good. This little meat thermometer, cause it's got a big long nice. <laughs> thing that you don't have to be too close. And you can actually, if I wanted to, I could just leave this in the oven with this stuck into the chicken and it would show me the temperature. I love those. I also love mine, which I, that's what I have. That's what I have, have one of those so, too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love mine. I, I will check the, the temperature of water before I make bread. <laughs> I, it's, it's our way of getting past Paul Hollywood. <laughs> Because if you put it in and it's 120, when they, your bread is 120, it's done. And you have a perfect bake, Paul Hollywood. <laughs> true, true. Anyway, so next week I will do the Armenian shawarma, whatever, whatever. Do the, the hummus, but you've already talked about hummus, Susan. But I'll do hummus, I'll do uh, the garlic sauce that, it's like a tahini, that, that garlic sauce. Mm -hmm. And um, and I'll do some rice. We'll, Sounds I'll yummy say, to me. Mm -hmm. Whatever you make, it's always yummy. <laughs> yes, so, I agree. Yeah. We'll figure out lule. <laughs> this reminds me of watching a Julia lule. Child show. I know. I'm telling you, I'm really considering like taking all of these videos and just giving Kate her own YouTube channel. I know. I, I think she should have it. her own YouTube channel. <laughs> Fine with me, but the problem is that you have all of the people involved. I want to make sure that that everyone is okay with that. Of course, okay I wouldn't that, do it because... without everyone's permission. Right. Yeah. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. And I think it could go viral. I think other people will start doing that. I mean, we have Zoom. Let's take advantage of it. Because it's, you know, it's ladies time. You know, it's, you know, it's social as well as food preparation. Well, and it's also, you, you do these things that come out looking so, so fantastic, but you make a point of how easy they are. You know, I think we're all good cooks. We can all follow a recipe, you know, but to have you teach us, you know, and just point out the, all the different things that make it much more exciting. I don't know. It's been awesome. Yeah. Thank you. I learned that.